Season yeah. one. Uh, thank you for having me. Uh, really excited to be here. Uh, I came last year. Uh, it was a great conference. Incredibly impressed with sort of the vibrancy and the energy around the uh, uh, the French startup and, and uh, tech community. So today I'm going to talk about how do you build and ultimately leverage a community. And first, just a quick introduction. So um, I work with uh, at the company called Envision, design collaboration platform for context. We've got about 900 employees globally, we're the largest fully remote company in the world. Um, we've raised $350 million. Uh, we work with 100% of the Fortune 100, but most importantly for this talk, we've got about 5 million people in our community. In our world, those are designers. So I've been with the company personally for about five years. Long time. Um, when I started, there was about 30 people at the company. Uh, we had a few hundred thousand folks in that community, and so I'm going to talk a little bit about the journey uh, that I've seen from that transition to 900 employees. And, you know, I built, started out in Boston building the go-to-market, moved to London uh, with my family, a couple of kiddos, big West Ham fan. Um, but what are we talking about? Today we're going to talk about community. And for a company like Envision, like, community is our superpower, right? And we'll talk a little bit about um, what we've done at Envision. And to be honest, not everything is going to be relevant to everybody here, right? There's going to be folks in different markets, different sales motions. Um, but I'm going to share some points about what we've done. There's a couple points that I shared from last year as well, but they're important because they're part of what we talk, what we do as a company around building that community. And the thing for all of the startups out there today, like community is really important early on. Like building that trust and credibility with, the, organ with the, the folks that you're ultimately going to cater to, like that is going to go so far for you to buy credibility, to build a trust, to buy you some time maybe when things aren't going as well. So to take a quick look back, you know, sort of the, the work environment historically, and um, you think it was a little bit more insular. People were sort of in their office and nine to fiving in their cubes, and things have changed. You think about the world now with open source. People are literally creating software for free for the good of the community. Things like Dribbble in our world, in the design world, or the proliferation of meetups. Right? Dribbble is as a platform for designers where they can publicly share their portfolio, get comments, get feedback. Like people are much more open. They're invested in hearing what other people think. Meetups. I mean, you could go to a friggin' meetup every day of the week right now if you wanted to. They're everywhere. And that's because people have that passion about what they do. It's a little bit no longer work-life balance. It's a little bit more work-life integration, for better or worse. And so people are enormously invested in having those con connections, creating those emotional touch points. And that's the foundation for a community, right? If you think about like, creating those emotional touch points, creating those interactions, that's how you build a community. And whether you like it or not, your brand is part of these conversations. So you need to get involved. You need to engage. At these meetups, people are having the conversations about the brands that they connect with. And you need to make sure that you're inserting that and you're controlling that. And the key thing, especially early on, is you know that people don't necessarily like products. They like brands. Maybe not West Ham, but they like brands. And so you've got to make sure that you're focused on standing for more than just what your product is. And this is really important early on when you're trying to build a community. Like, sell that dream. Sell the vision of what ultimately your product will fulfill, and that's what your brand story will be, because ultimately the brand is what's going to help you drive, create, and foster a healthy community. You know, everybody knows this story, um, you know, but selling that vision of a thousand songs in your pocket versus a four gig MP3 digital music player or whatever it is, right? That's selling the vision, that's selling the dream. Lululemon, when they first started out, it wasn't about yoga clothing. It was about yoga. It was about the promise, the vision, the dream of yoga. They hosted retreats. They sponsored workshops everywhere. Like that was how they turned that emotional connection and that vision into brand love. And that's what's important because as a startup, especially, like you're not going to be able to be everywhere. You're not going to have a big sales force or the, lot, the marketing air cover. 
right? These conversations are gonna be happening and you need to weaponize that community to make sure they're having a positive experience. And so they're representing that for you in the market. Like use that community to your advantage. So where do you start? And you start with understanding your customer. Like the reality is, you know, everybody says know your customer is, who, who know who your customer is, but the reality is like, who's the hero of your story? Like that's what you gotta figure out. I'd envision the designer, the designer's our hero. And understand who the, what the hero of the story is, like what their motivations are, but really get to know the customer. You know, taking it back to the Apple example, I mean, BlackBerry, you know, it was a pretty good product. You know, people love BlackBerry in terms of the enterprise security, the IT, um, the enterprise applications, and all of that, like the IT buyers loved it. But what they did is they catered to the buyer. They didn't cater to the customer. And that was the opportunity that Apple exploited. They knew the customer. They built that emotional connection with the customer. And we all know how that played out. So you really have to invest in figuring out, you know, who that, who that hero of your story is. You know, talking to them, getting to know them personally, knowing their market. The big thing is understanding, like, really about them in terms of, you know, I talk to designers all the time, and I always ask, why did you get into design? Tell me about how you first got into design. How do people get promoted? What do they want from a career perspective? Like, you really got to know what they want as a person to help you start to build some empathy around it. We've got a program at Envision um, called Delicious Empathy. And so anybody at the company across sales, support, IT, whatever, we've got 900 people fully remote, so all over the place. Anybody has an opportunity to take a designer out to dinner once a month, a non-Envision designer, once a month and expense it. And the one rule is you're not allowed to talk about Envision, right? Because we want people to understand our customers on a personal level, what motivates them, what drives them. You know, and then we've talked about, you know, you bring some of them on board. We've hired the heads of design of MailChimp, Twitter, um, Citibank, you know, brought these folks in on board. And they didn't join Envision because of our product. They brought Envision, they came to Envision because they bought into what we were doing for the designers, how we were evangelizing that designer story. So you can really get to know them. And then when you do, you've got to start getting the product in that community's hands. Right? Figure out at every step of the way, if there are opportunities to get your product out there. And I've talked about this, but it's important when you're building a community to identify those friction points and address each one of them. And it's gonna be different for your company. It's gonna be different for your market. But think about all the things that you could be doing. And for us, early on, you know, we launched a self-service free product. That was our opportunity to get the product in people's hands. You know, if people lack trust in your brand early on, you know, use customer testimonials, long-term commitment, you know, give them an opt-out. There's all these really tactical things that you can do, but understand that entire customer journey and where those things are that you can remove from friction. And the big thing for community as well is like, bring them into the product conversation. Set up product councils, share the roadmap if you have one, but you've gotta show that vision. And that's where early on, you know, removing those barriers on the product will help you establish that trust. And you're gonna have to revisit this as you enter new markets. Like the building community in different markets is going to be different. Like there's just going to, there's going to be nuances around pricing. There's going to be nuances around security. So you're going to have to revisit this as you're building your community into different markets internationally, especially. And we're finding this right now at Envision. And then I've talked about this, but building those anchor relationships is so key for understanding, you know, for, for, uh, for building that community in some of these earlier markets. For us at Envision, like the digital natives, those were, our, those were our anchor relationships. Figure out who in the market are kind of the, 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 the cool kids. The who in the market, the markets that you're going after, does everybody else look up to? And then build relationships with them because then you'll start to be able to leverage that network effect. And this is the, this is the you know, origination of community. And we've done this, you know, we're doing this now at Envision as we move into you know, APAC and building relationships with you know, Grab or Flipkart and companies like that where we know that they're viewed as these innovative, forward-looking companies. And so build those relationships because you can expand on that. And the key thing, especially early on when you're selling that vision and building that brand, is making sure that you're delivering value. 
not just selling software. You know, there's a lot of opportunities to do this. This is definitely one of Envision's superpowers is, you know, delivering content and vehicles to connect people with a community. Um, you know, this is a pretty big story for Envision, but, you know, we made a movie. We're making another movie. Um, but early on, we decided that we were going to make a movie um, about how the most innovative companies in the world have used product design to disrupt their industry. And we made a feature-length film. I thought our CEO founder was crazy. Um, but we had an hour-long uh, hour film that we've now shared back to the community. And it's not about Envision. We're not in the movie. There's nothing about Envision in the movie. We just deliver that as a gift almost back to the community. We've done over 900 screenings now across the globe. We have a full film team internally where we're now doing films around people in our community that are interesting, companies that are interesting. We have a new movie coming out about the squad format and sort of tribes and talking to the, the founder of sort of the tribe, you know, Agile. Um, even the little things like swag. You know, if you're going to invest in something like swag and you're trying to build that brand connection with your community, be thoughtful about it. My animations were a little too quick, but we know in our demographic, there's a lot of people that are going through a time in their life where they're having kids. Right? So we have baby clothes. We have onesies. Right? And so some of the stuff is cheesy, but if you're going to try to build that brand and emotional connection with people early on, something as simple as swag can be important. And so be thoughtful about it. You can also have an opportunity early on. I don't care what company you're in, what market you're in. You have an opportunity to be a connection point. Right? You can be a conduit for others. Everybody's so heads down in their own world. One of the programs we have at Envision is called um, Design Exchange. And we did our first one in Munich. We have one next month in Sydney. And we're basically taking some of the most innovative designers in the world and you know, folks from Airbnb and Netflix and Google, and we're bringing them to mar different markets. We're bringing them to maybe less design mature markets. And they're doing design studio tours, they're doing workshops, they're doing panels, all of that. And we're trying to be that conduit, that connection point to deliver value outside of just that product. And you need to make sure that you're doing that at every touch point because the brand is the key to building the community. And everybody in your company is a representative of that brand at every touch point, whether it's support, whether it's chat, no matter what it is, make sure they represent that brand. Bring them into the, into the support conversation. You know, we have a Envision community forum. You know, it's not groundbreaking. Um, but having that conversation with folks, like that's what people will value in the... Uh, in the, uh, in the early stages when you're trying to build that connection with your brand. And the key is you need to be authentic, right? We make mistakes, everybody makes mistakes, and you've got to admit to them. Have that conversation. Maybe your product didn't get out the door fast enough. Maybe you don't have the features that every competitor has. But have that conversation early, because when you build that emotional connection and trust, that buys you credibility, that buys you some time or they're gonna stick with you on this journey, even if some of the things aren't fulfilling the promises early on. So bring them into the fold and have those connections. And then take that customer love, because really it comes down to building that customer connection and build that into everything that you do. And that's really important, even on things like values. And you know, you've gotta have, have values around your customer. If you don't, you need to create them. And then you need to hold people accountable to them. You know, build it in everything you do, including the hiring. Right? Have people that you're interviewing, have they shown an example where they've given back in some way, shape, or form? Have they demonstrated authenticity? Do they show customer empathy? Are these the type of traits that, that you're looking for? Like, make sure you're testing for that in the process and hire for it. And make sure that they're there for the right reasons. Because early on, again, like, you, know, you might not have all the infrastructure, the product might not be where it needs to be. But if they believe in the dream, they believe in that opportunity, they want to be owners of that. Like those are the types of things that you need to be checking and testing for early on. The people are there for the right reasons um, and for that opportunity. Because ultimately when people go out into the market, they're sitting at the airport next to somebody, they're talking at a meetup, like they're representatives of your brand. And again, that brand and the emotional connection with that brand is what's gonna drive, uh, drive community. And you've gotta build it in to even your go-to-market. Like this is probably, um, 
you know, kind of the moral of the story here for, uh, for us at Envision. You know, we do, we have what's called the three Ps. Um, people, practices, and platform. And like, no one of these is more important than the other. And like, if you take anything away, like this is our, kind of our go to market. And so, starting with the people, you know, all of these different things up here are vehicles for us to communicate and talk to folks in our, uh, in our community. We've got things like a design, leader, uh, design forward fund. We actually invest in early stage design startups. We do fireside chats, we do leadership camps. We have a leadership forum. We launched this a little over a year ago. We now have about 1,000 of the most senior designers in the world globally that we created this forum and that we get together for VIP dinners. We did one in London um, this week. They have a Slack channel. Like, it doesn't matter what stage you're at. Like, you have an opportunity to be that connection point, to bring these people together. Like, they want that. And so figure out what those vehicles could be for your business. Practices, as you're early, even when you're early on, like as you start to build a community, you start to build that critical mass of customers, like the secret sauce is you start learning. What are they doing? What's going on behind the scenes? And you can start to share that with their permission, but you can share that across the board because the reality is when you're thinking about like how do you evangelize the hero of your story, to build a community, people want to have a voice. They want to have their voice elevated. Give them that platform, podcasts, blogs, whatever. Sometimes folks internally, the hero of your story, like maybe they're having trouble elevating, in our case, the elevating the role of design. And sometimes if you give them that external visibility, that'll drive their internal visibility. And again, that's where you're catering to some of these folks where maybe from a career standpoint, they want to in improve their employee, their, their brand for their next job. Like, use all of these things. We have something called the Design Genome Project. It's basically a, um, a portal for, for aggregation of best practices. And so Google and Netflix and USAA, they sort of lift the curtain and they share behind the scenes. But what's really interesting is they don't, it's not about Envision pro, the Envision product. I wish it was sometimes, but it's about hiring. How are they building culture internally? How are they building career development tracks for their design teams? Like all of these really interesting things. I met with Deutsche Bank last week and they were saying, yeah, Envision's the number one bookmark on my, on my, um, that I go to every morning the team goes to. Because of the content that we're delivering, because of the value add that we're providing, beyond just the software. But then ultimately you've got the product. And you know, we've got a number of different products and features and we just launched the new uh, screen design tools for, for sort of the front end of the design process. We offered it for free, and I know not everybody can offer things for free, but you know, this is again us giving back to the community some level of our product so they can interact with it to build that emotional connection. But ultimately, like that's the sweet spot, the intersection of the three for us, the people, the practices, and the platform. Like there's times when people maybe are not as fulfilled on the product side but they stick with us because of what they're getting for the connections, for the value adds. Or there's times when you know, people are you know, coming to us with best practices or maybe they're, some of the content's not as good, but like, then they love the product. Like it's that combination of those three things. That's the sweet spot that has been the secret sauce for us at Envision for building a community of five million people. So quick summary, you know, understanding the hero of your story. Like what motivates them? How do they get promoted? Like how do you evangelize for them? Hire them, bring them into the fold. Get your brand into the community. Build that brand around the community needs, not just their product needs. Get the product into their hands, identify the friction points, remove and iterate on that, but most importantly, sell that dream. Early on, your product's not gonna be able to fulfill everything. Sell the dream, sell the vision, bring the people into that process. That'll help you build those emotional connections. And then delivering value every step of the way. Being authentic. Bring your customers into the process. And most importantly, with that community and customer love, like bake that into everything you do. Bake it into your hiring, bake it into your training, and ultimately bake it into your go-to-market. Thank you. She's a one.